My name is Cheryl and I'm the PSRE Science Specialist here at the Pig Lab. Welcome to another episode of PSLE Science Meet Simple. In this video, I will be analysing a past year examination question on the topic of living and non-living things. I will also include this question to download for free by clicking the link in the description box down below. So let's get started. Question 2. Amy, Ben, Clara and Daryl made the following statements about living things. Before taking a look at the four statements below, let's recall the six characteristics of living things. Can you recall what is the first characteristic of living thing? Let me give you a hint. Living things need three things to survive. What are these three things? Living things need air, food, and water to survive. So I want you to imagine, if I do not give you any air, food, and water, what will happen to you? You will die, correct? And that is the second characteristic of living things. Living things can die. Now, let's move on to the third characteristic of living things. Let me share an example with you. Let's say two years ago, your height was 80 cm. But this year, when you measured your height, you realize that your height now is 90 cm. Why do you think you increased by 10 cm in height? What does this show you about the characteristic of living things? This shows you that living things can grow. Let's move on to the next characteristic of living things. Imagine that you have a pet cat at home. And when you take a look at your pet cat over the next few weeks, you realize that your pet cat's tummy got larger and larger and larger over the few weeks. And finally, one fine day when you are at home, you heard a soft meow. You went over to your pet cat and you saw that there were five or six little kittens lying next to your pet cat. From this scenario, what can you show me about the characteristic of living things? This shows us that living things can reproduce. And if you take a closer look at these little kittens, you would realize that they will crawl around their mother, correct? So what other characteristic of living things that you can think of? The little kittens crawling around their mother show us that living things can move by themselves. Now, let's take a look at the last characteristic of living things. Let me give you another scenario. Imagine that you are walking along the road and when you look down to the grass patch beside you, you saw some mimosa leaves so you take your finger and touch the mimosa leaves. What do you think you will observe? You would realize that the mimosa leaves would close up. And what is the last characteristic of living things that is linked to this observation? This shows us that living things can respond to changes around them. Now, after knowing these six characteristics, let's take a look at the four statements above to see who made the correct statement. Amy mentioned that all living things can reproduce. Take a look at the six characteristics of living things we have written below. Is one of them about living things can reproduce? Yes, this is the fourth characteristic of living things that we have mentioned earlier. So Amy is correct. Let's take a look at Ben. Ben mentioned that all living things need food to survive. Did we mention anything about living things needing food to survive earlier? Yes, the first characteristic of living things that we have mentioned earlier is that living things need air, food and water to survive. So Ben is correct as well. Let's take a look at Clara. Clara mentioned that all living things can make their own food. Now I want you to match what Clara mentioned to the six characteristics of living things that we have written earlier. Does Clara's statement match any of the six characteristics? It doesn't. So this means that Clara's statement is wrong. And as a fun fact, you would learn in primary school that only plants would be able to make their own food. Let's now take a look at Daryl's statement. Daryl mentioned that all living things can move freely from one place to another. Now, I know many of you would think that Daryl is correct because we have mentioned earlier that living things can move by themselves. So that is the reason why living things can move freely from one place to another. If we are talking about humans, animals, 
Yes, I agree that we do actually move freely from one place to another. But what about plants? What about fungi like mushroom? If I have a plant at this location on day one, and if I did not shift the plant, do you think you will see the plant at another location on day two? The answer would be a no. This is because the plant is not able to move freely from one place to another, just like the fungi. So let's write that down. That the plants and fungi cannot move freely from one place to another. And that is why Daryl's statement is incorrect. Based on this, can you tell me who made the correct statements? The answer would be Amy and Ben, option number one. Thank you for watching this video. If you find that this video was useful, do give us a thumbs up and leave us a note in the comment section below so we know we're on the right track. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and click here for more. See you next time!